Alright. Paired boards seem to give beginning players a lot of trouble. I get a lot of questions like, what do I do if I'm check raised? How often does someone flop trips anyway? And what kind of line should I take when I flop trips myself? These are all good questions to ask, and we'll talk more about how to approach paired boards in the later lessons. But for now what I want you to realize is that there's two main characteristics to look for when you see a paired board. The first is which card is paired, and the second is whether the unpaired card is higher or lower than the paired card. Pause the video for a few seconds and take a guess for why these two things are important. And then whenever you're ready, I'll meet you at the next slide. Alright, the first thing I want to do is answer one of the questions I brought up at the beginning of the last slide, which is that a random hand flops trips or a full house about 20% of the time. This is a useful stat and everything, but it's more important to pay attention to the rank of the paired card and how it fits into your opponent's preflop range, because obviously the likelihood that someone flopped trips or better on a deuce 4-4 board is much lower than on an ace-jack-jack board. Likewise, how high the pair on the board is also affects semi-bluffing opportunities. For example, it's mostly true that it's a bad idea to draw to straights and flushes on paired boards, but there are definitely spots where overcards and flush draws have semi-bluffing value. For example, let's say you open the button, and a player with a solid 3-betting range 3-bet you out of the blinds with 100 big blind stacks, and then c-bet slightly over half pot on a 5-5-6 two-tone flop. Having a flush draw on a low board like this has value, because it's unlikely his 3-betting range hit that board, but your perceived 3-bet calling range can definitely rep trips. So combined with your fold equity, semi-bluff raising the flop, or calling and raising the turn are viable options that can be very profitable against the right players. Now, the boards where the pair is higher than the unpaired card typically play out differently than when the unpaired card is higher than the pair. The main difference being that there's more action, because the players fortunate enough to flop trips feel more comfortable playing their hand fast, because, after all, even if someone flopped a full house, the presence of live side cards means that they still have roughly 40% equity, in addition to the possibility of having the best hand. Plus, even if someone has you out kicked, your equity isn't all that terrible as long as your side cards are live. Now, on the other hand, when the pair is lower than the unpaired cards, the action tends to slow down significantly. Especially when the pot is multi-way or deep stacked, Players aren't as excited to shovel money into the pot, because of the prospect of drawing virtually dead. Most of the time, bear trips will just c-bet and play passively when faced with aggression, especially if the unpaired card on the board matches with players' preflop ranges, like, for example, in a 3-bet pot on an ace-3-3 three three board. But just because the action slows down on these boards doesn't mean there's no room for getting creative. For example, since bear under trips have to be concerned with another player having the overfull, this presents a good opportunity to execute a big bluff when you hold a blocker to the overfull. But before you try this out, just make sure you treat it like any other blocker bluff. Don't do it against a fish, or any player for that matter, that won't fold trips regardless of how expensive you make it. Also, make sure the stacks are deep enough to fire barrels if you have to. And last, don't do it if you have a terrible image, but if you have a tight image, then I would definitely consider it. If you want more advice on using blockers, you should definitely check out Lesson 11. Hey, what's going on guys? Casino Crime here. Now if you like this video and you want more, then go ahead and click the subscribe button below right now. And if you want to join me for more of my 6 max success secrets and free video tutorials, just click the link to the right. See you inside the trainings. Good luck.